Art and Biology. Could you explain the program in further detail? Sure. So last year in biology, we wanted to explore the connection between form and function. So in order to really deepen an understanding of uh, a process or a structure, you really need to understand why its shape helps it do its job. And so um, after talking with Ms. Rufo, we decided that a good way to get across that idea would be to incorporate art into the biology curriculum. So we decided to do it in two ways, to focus on diagrammatic drawing as a tool for understanding biology as well as realistic drawing as a tool for capturing data and really looking at um, a live sample. So we set up two lessons, one looking at a cell and focus on diagrammatic drawing in the cell, and the second one was with our frog dissections, looking at our realistic data collection of a frog. Right. So the cell drawings were the diagrammatic drawings, and they're much simpler, and I'm going to probably pan to this now, but um, there are ways of drawing these organelles and cells that are three-dimensional and really help to show how things happen in the cell, like a little machine, and it's better than drawing them flat because it's really hard to get a sense of what's actually going on. And then in the... Um, Observational drawing, the realistic drawing, we used the frog dissections, and that's really complicated realistic drawing. But it helps students to put aside what they think a frog looks like and instead to actually draw what they see. And we try to draw the connection for them between that kind of observational drawing and collecting data in a scientific way. Um, in a scientific way. So you put aside what you're expecting to see and just collect your data. So you already kind of touched on the bias in art, but what were some of the challenges that you faced with the program overall? Well, what we faced, I think, is that the students didn't think they could do it or, you know, just didn't have the confidence in their drawing skills. Um, and what we expect to face in um, Nashville is that the teachers probably have those same um, insecurities about their abilities to draw, much less teaching drawing but it really can be done. Right, yeah. Um, drawing is a huge part of teaching the life sciences. In fact, if you walk into pretty much any life science classroom, you'll find some sort of picture or um, mechanism or molecular pathway sketched on the wall. And most science teachers don't get any sort of instructions about how to draw these kinds of things. And so even though we do it all the time, they don't feel like they have a lot of confidence in it or a lot of often will mock their own drawings or sort of lose some of the data in that their own drawings. So we really wanted to um, teach them that they can do it and empower them and um, teach them how. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So people think that being able to draw is something that you're just born with but there's so much that can be taught. There's so much that if you're just given these few skills, you're going to be able to do it. So that's what we hope to teach people. Another thing that was a challenge was overcoming bias. So we really found this with the fraud drawings, that one of the things we worked on was not, so when you sit down to actually draw your frog specimen, it felt really overwhelming to draw a frog. Um, and what we had to coach kids to do is to not draw a frog, but to draw exactly what was in front of them. So we used a grid method and really forced them to collect exactly what was in front of them, not what they thought was in front of them. So this is tied into the idea of scientific thinking and scientific data collection, where you're removing any bias, removing what you expect going into your experiment, and instead only looking at what's in front of you. Great. And what did the students think about it? Oh, I think they had a really positive response, yeah. Yeah, they really did. Um, they worked really hard on it, and they really felt like spending the extra time on the projects um, really cemented the ideas in their brain, really helped them to connect the idea of form and function. I think they came out of it realizing that they could draw a lot better than they thought. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I, I think so. But yeah. I think they thought so. <laughs> they did, they did. Great. Um, so when you talk next, mention that you'll be going to the National Science Teachers Association and talk about kind of what you hope to share with them. So we're, we proposed a workshop and um, we were invited to present our workshop to science teachers. I was going to say other science teachers, but I'm not a science teacher. And we will present what we did and we will have those teachers go through the same lesson, essentially, 
and um, we'll give them all the behind the scenes information about how they can teach it to their students. Yeah, so that'll be at the National Convention of in Science Teachers in Nashville at the yep. end of the month. Um, yeah, and so we'll be giving them how to incorporate these skills into their into their lesson planning. And yeah. Exactly. And it's all part of this um, taking STEM a step further and calling it STEAM and adding art and design into the science and technology and math and engineering um, because these visual skills are so important.